This week in PlayStation, we're talking about the best trophy resource you're not using and our thoughts so far in our Rise of the Ronin review. We'll have all this and more because this is PSI Love You XOXO. <laughs> Welcome to PSI Love You XOXO. That's Mike. That's Andy. I'm Greg. And if you love what we do, you should get the kind of funny membership on Patreon or YouTube to get every episode of PSI Love You XOXO ad free to get it as we record it usually, except when there's embargoes like today, uh, to get all the other podcasts ad-free, all the other podcasts live as we record them, and of course, get the multi multimedia experience each and every day, yes. Greg Way. I used to say vlog, but then it made it sound like it wasn't also a podcast. But if you say podcast you, if, and a vlog, that sounds weird. We're calling it a multimedia experience. Boys. It's also a 3D experience at PSVR. And some people say I'm so loud, it feels like I'm inside of their car with you. <laughs> uh, of course, you can get PS I Love You XOXO for free with ads and without all the exclusive content on YouTube and podcast services around the globe, usually each and every Friday. But again, embargoes, Andy. You know how they are? It's dangerous huh? out there. You got to be careful. Huh? You'll be so careful. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Carl Jacobs, Kieran Hova, Hova Sapien, uh, Delaney Twining. Today we're brought to you by Shady Rays and Robin Hood. But let's start with a PSN message from you. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, you can write in to kindoffunny.com slash P-S-I-L-Y with your questions, thoughts, concerns to be part of the show. But look at you two. Andy and Mike on PS, I love you, XOXA. What are we Sorry, I'm wearing an Xbox. I know what you're doing. Fans, <laughs> they're going to be immediately in the comments. Today. <laughs> oh, they'll be fine. Don't worry so about hot. it. Last week's episode was all about the Xbox game that should come over here. So oh, yes. Fine. Don't worry about it. It's a Cheshire cat. Sort exactly. Of like sweatshirt, yeah. <laughs> in three years, nobody would think about that. But hi, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Xbox, like just, every job. Xbox game we on PlayStation anyway. Won't matter. Get ready. We'll all be playing on a PC probably by then. Uh, Dominique wrote in to kindoffunny.com slash PSILY just like you can. It says, imagine a PlayStation trophy room on the PS5. What would you love to see? Categories based on rarity or popularity, broken down by metal, bronze, silver, gold, or platinum. Should it display recent, tro recent trophies, your friends' achievements, or even your own user-determined trophies? What trophy would you proudly display? Let's dive into the possibilities. Well, I, I just like immediately think about Greg. Home. Um, like, <sighs> the younger brother looking at the older brother's trophies. Sure. And being okay. like, Dad, I don't, I'm not... I'm not him, okay? Yeah. I'm not yeah. the varsity yeah, athlete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't platinum, you know, Bloodborne and, and Elden Ring. I'm sorry. I'm not him. I'm a different person, okay? I'm over here Dad playing. finishes the beer, throws yeah. it in your head. Yeah. Get out of here! Exactly, exactly. Get into PSVR 2. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> is this like a PSVR home sort of solution? Are we looking I, for... You know, Dominique is I'm looking is for a virtual room. Yeah, I'm thinking of a virtual trophy case in my mind. I want something that I can... Proudly display my favorite trophies because let's be real with each other. You're not displaying 99% of those trophies, right? Like there's just trash bronze trophies that you don't care about. Yeah, you don't yeah, want that yeah, in your yeah. room, right? So I want a trophy case that is dedicated to my very best that I handpick, right? And hopefully they have like cool virtual looks to them. And then Greg can come to my profile and go in. I would like like a PS home experience where you kind of walk around maybe a room would be dope, but I want to be able to see my friends. I want to show off my favorites in a virtual trophy case or possibly man cave type room. Ma Jerseys oh. on the wall. Okay. I mean, you bringing up the stuff that you're most proud of. It reminds yeah. me of in a game like Apex Legends. I know a lot of other games do this, but when you create your player banner, something that's easily seen, somebody goes, oh, wow, they... They have they got they, have this stuff. they got gold rank in season two yeah, and yeah, season yeah, three yeah. And, and platinum in season four or whatever. But I don't really know how to do that in a way that is like easily communicable to sure. another person to show them. Like, well, I got they started stuff. to with this, you know, the silver and gold tiers and all that jazz. Mm. They put in trophy things, but it's just too wide. Of, it's too, it's an ocean. It doesn't make any sense. Nobody cares about it. Mm. My thing about it is under no circumstance do I want a virtual room. All right. Really? When they were trying to pull this shit with PlayStation Home and they were, I, even then I was like, that sounds <laughs> stupid. I don't want that. $20 by the, want that. the virtual Ikea shelf. What they need to do is go and do exactly what PSN Profiles does. I talk about PSN Profiles on the show all the time, but a question like this from Dominique would tell me that not everybody's checking it out. Uh, right now, if you're a video watcher, we've pulled up PSN Profiles, my profile, Game Over Greggy, and like all I think 
and I, I would say PlayStation gamers, but I would go as far as just gamers want when it comes to this kind of stuff is data. At the end of the year, everybody's always so stoked for your year in review Xbox, yeah, PlayStation, it. this. PlayStation, I thought, did such a great job emulating Spotify rap this year of like the first game you played, every game you played this month, or, you know, the blah, blah, blah. But like, PSN Profiles is that to an absurd degree for an absurd level, right? It talks about, uh, this is just my profile, the amount of games you've played, the games you've completed, your percentage. It goes down even to break it down of like how many trophies a day you get, if you know you did the math. Mm. Over here, your rarest trophies are set aside. Yeah, that's right. I'm a singing star celebrity. Only 0.59% of people have that that. ultra rare trophy. Wow. But if you scroll (laughs) down again, right, it's the same way where it's like, first off, they ultra rare, very rare, yada, yada. But trophy milestones over there on the right, right? My latest platinum, my 175th platinum, my fastest platinum, my 150. Mm. Like, that's what I'm looking for. Those are little things I love. It's the right way to show it. It's just boring, Greg. It's not flashy. It's not fun. I what agree I that there's, do, some, there's I think uh, before we go to a full vo- yeah, yeah. virtual room and before we go to just pure permanently stats, there's it's something this. like Andy's talking about. Well, yeah, this your is what I'm getting there. at. Is like I like this this player profile go to, banner, uh, which go is back just a to, small square. Go back to PSN profiles and just click on the PSN profiles. Go to psnprofiles.com yeah. and it'll automatically jer- because like what I'm thinking of is like when I this go right to my here, PSN Ma- friends Ma- Machiavelli list, zero one zero. I want to be able to see. That yeah. right. That's where you can hang maybe your top three fast. It's easy to see, right? I don't want to go onto a giant. I do want the data, right? I think there's a, yeah, a yeah. level to that, but I'm talking about quick, easy, fast to see. I want something like that that's showable and easy. Okay. Well, fair enough. Let's move on to topic of the show. Tots, 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 tots. I wasn't sure if Barrett was back yet. Yeah. Kevin in there, I think still. Kevin, is it you? There it is. <laughs> it's Topic of the show, of course, is our Rise of the Ronin review so far. Of course, hold on to all your lawsuits, PlayStation. Uh, PlayStation sent us codes for review, of course. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Rise of the Ronin, of course, is out March 22nd. It is from Team Ninja. Of course, you know them from a plethora of games like Ninja Guide and Neo, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, and then Whoa Long. Whoa Long. Whoa. 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 Mike, Andy, me, we're all here because we've played it. Mike, how much have you played? I am seven hours in, okay. and I am officially done playing the game. I'm not beating the game. I am <laughs> done playing You're this game. You're putting it down and walking it away. I'm done. Yep. I appreciate that. Andy? I'm a little over 20 hours. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, Give or take. You know, sometimes you put that controller down. Yeah, yeah popcorn. I know. Yeah, it's, yeah. I've been eating a lot of drumstick ice cream lately. <laughs> <laughs> the, the crispy crust. No, I, know, I know what a drum. But, but like, but, but not the ones with the with the peanuts around it. The no, the, the, the crispity, crunchity. Yeah, he has a new bar. kind of drumstick that he it's likes. Fantastic! Oh my god, yeah. Greg, it's a it's a whole new level. You so thought what's drumsticks are good about before? It is the ice cream. It's shell? No, no, you know, like a crispy, a Nestle crisp bar. Yeah. Crispy, crunch, crispy, bar. crunchy, crunch bar. Nestle crunch, crunch bar. bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the whole shell is that chocolate with like the little crispy bits Rice around. So it. what are you doing with the the drumstick while playing this game? Are you eating it every time <laughs> you defeat it? That's enemies? how you got twenty hours in the like game. It's a very yeah, odd, like, just I'm eating a lot of drumsticks while playing this game. <laughs> What's going on? Well, here? Ma- you know, maybe I put it down on the beanbag, and maybe sometimes a big chocolate <laughs> shell will fall off. I'll be like, where'd that chocolate shell go? On my pants. Yeah, of Super course melted it is. In. Of course it is. Delicious. Of course it is. Greg, okay. how much time do you have in it? Uh, I am. At 10 hours, I'd say, at this okay. point. Yeah, yeah, right there or whatever. And I'm excited to talk about it because I started very late. Uh, you know, I, I had a whole bunch of trips and other reviews and yada, yada, yada. And so it had been off on the side, off on the side, off on the side. I came back and Blessing and then even you two on previews have been like, eh, it's whatever. It's Rise of the Ronin. It's, it's not bad. It's this. And we're going to get into your thoughts on it or whatever. And so I was like, oh, well. I'm going to jump into Dragon's Dogma. We, that was our, we reviewed that or did an impressions piece this morning on Gamescast. I was like, that's the first review up. I'd like to have something to say about that. Played like an hour and a half, two hours of Dogma and was like, this isn't what I want right now. And I don't know if it'll turn into something I would want, Greg Miller. So I was like, I'll check out Ronin and jumped into Ronin. And I don't know if it was because of Andy, Mike, and Blessing being like, eh, that my bar was so low, but I fucking love this game. Wow. I am in love with wow. this game. And it is very much like every criticism I think you're about to lodge at it and everything else, I share with you and stuff. My thing is, though, like you are a ninja who is grappling around like Spider-Man and then flying off into the air with a wingsuit <laughs> to then drop down and assassinate people. Great combo. 
Rise of the Ronin is a video game. It is a, and I say game in all caps. And I, you know, usually when Greg Miller rants and raves about a video game, lots of times it's all oh, the story, of this and the story of that and that. This is a game. This is a open world sandbox. Go ahead and like they've put all these different tether points so that when you're up in the air in your suit, you can tether to keep flying and get higher. There's the smorgasbord of things to go off and do. It cracked my shit up today because I was looking at the embargo and. The embargo is like, okay, yeah, you know, when you, you, the preview embargo that's long gone when you guys were talking about it, they were like, okay, you know, you can talk after this one very specific mission title or whatever. They're like, we estimate that to take you 100 minutes to 120 minutes. I finished that mission at the seven hour mark because I am meticulously Mm. opening up the map, taking out the enemy encampment, going and getting the skill point, doing the thing. Oh, there's a cat to get. Oh, Oh, you got to pet that cat. Oh, it's one of the cats that gets scared. All right, I'll come back and I'll sneak up on this cat. You know what I mean? I'm going to get that fucker. I'm going to get this (laughs) This pussy's mine. You know what I mean? (laughs) Jesus Christ. What? We're talking about a cat. Yeah, of course. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, Uh It is, you know... I think it's impossible to underplay as Blessing did when he's like, I think this is a Greg game. It's like, oh, it is so a Greg Ubisoft checklist, but gameplay that I really do find satisfying and I really do enjoy of the combat and stuff. But I was not a woe long person, Andy. So I'm interested for where you are starting from or where you're at 20 hours in with it. Uh, I'm not surprised that, that you're super into it. I'm not surprised when if a lot of people get into it, right? I, I've i said several times that this could hit at the right time in your life when your body doesn't know that it really wants an open world checklist game but you get it and you go oh actually this is kind of per- the perfect vibe i'm looking for right now um i'm yeah a little over 20 hours in team ninja does great with combat they they it's gotten even more expanded with the different weapons and the different stances stuff that reminds me of ghost of Tsushima. Of um changing the stances really adds a a different level of depth that i wasn't necessarily expecting and i didn't want it's welcomed when i jumped in i was very much like oh stance switching was so easy in ghost this is a little bit more because it's not only the weapon and then the stances you have and how they apply to that weapon and then like you know at you know seven ten hours in now it's it's night and it's so easy yeah and i do like landing and oh the katana I'm using and the stance I'm using is super strong against this one guy coming at me, but the other guy it's weak against. So let's prioritize that guy, get him done, fall back, switch stances, take on the other. Yeah, guy. switch to my, you know, whatever long halberd or whatever sort of weapon yeah. that is my secondary weapon. Um, yeah, combat's fantastic. This this game does nothing terrible. I, I think in some moments AI is pretty atrocious. Um, yeah. You could kill it. You could shoot your gun at a dude 12 feet away from another guy and that guy won't hear anything. Which is sometimes welcome, but it's like a, a lot of other times. It's immersion you, breaking to it. You definitely feel I'm the uh, wailing on this guy, and there's another guy right there looking towards us, but sitting at a fire. And I'm like, and I appreciate you're not engaging because I got my, my yeah. hands are full right now. But that's <laughs> stupid. The, <laughs> the video game aspect of it, though, it I, I it already kind of lowered my expectations for immersion. Yeah. When um, again, this takes place. Let me just read this real quick. This play, takes place in the mid 19th century. During Bakumatsu, the final years of the Edo period, the game depicts the Boshin uh, War between the Tokugawa shogunate and various anti-shogunate factions displeased with Western influence. There's a lot of Americans in this game. Oh, yeah, I'm and fucking them up. immersion immediately was broken when the first American goes, bring it on! And I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, why? It's a 19th century. Why is this American general guy dressed like George Washington going, bring it on! It was just very, very odd. Um, so immediately right there, I know... They're going to play fast and loose with more of the factual stuff, which like I'm not going to act like I'm an expert in any yeah, of this yeah, stuff. Yeah. But uh, the, immediately the tone was kind of lessened there. And so I'm a little more forgiving of the silly, terrible AI when, again, I'm, sh- I'm using my rifle that I've picked up from uh, these American soldiers and nobody is hearing it close by. And it's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. it's very, very odd. Or that dude is like. I'm probably in his view, but he can't <laughs> see me. I'm like, yeah, I'm right yeah, there yeah. though. Um, so AI can be really, really silly sometimes. Silly and, is a great way to put it. And yeah. Think, and that's the thing where it's like, it's not bad. I don't think it is more like, why wouldn't you see this? And, I, yeah. and it's, it's a, it is a conscious choice by the developers because they're like, well, we want you to be able to engage one or two at a time. Not the entire camp is on you like it was before, but it's back to the whole thing of like, even like, you know, how silly games are in general, or even in Ghost, where I'd be assassinating someone. Like, and even if Mike was up by the TVs and I assassinated you here, no matter how quiet I am, he's going to hear you get stabbed yeah, in the head. Exactly. You're going to hear that impact yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, 
I uh, I do want to say that the game twenty hours in finally did something cutscene and story wise that was actually d done well. I would yeah. say because everything else until uh, since then has just been very very. I just by the books not not fantastic by any means. It's like they're throwing a lot of characters at you. Uh, these the cutscenes and the the dialogue that they're trying to throw at you aren't really hitting in any way that feels impactful. I don't care about some of the deaths or some of the rivalries. It's just been so so blah so far. And to, on on the opposite side of things, Ghost of Tsushima I thought did all of those things incredibly well um, with the acting and with the side characters are meeting and building those bonds and totally. feeling those relationships. I thought. Um, I thought um, Ghost was an, a well-rounded experience. That. Yeah, absolutely. And that's again why I come back to this one, and it's impossible not to compare them, and they should be compared, right, since this is, even though a Team Ninja game, a PlayStation Studios project, right? They're pushing this as an exclusive. Yeah. Of course, Ghost being one of theirs. It's very interesting that you would have two samurai games like this in development that are so similar. I mean, when I, when the, when you pick up the cat to pet it, I'm like, this reminds me a lot of this fox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this reminds me a lot of the little fox guys. Yeah, um, yeah. But it, I think it just does. It, I think it's ghost of Tsushima, the diet version. Uh, it's, it's less pretty, which is weird. Cause it's a, it's been in development on for, to be a PlayStation five exclusive. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. And, and that's one thing that I know it's a hot topic out about like, it's not that bad looking of a game. People are just being annoying, but it's like, Going into it, I saw the way Wolong looked, and I'm like, well, this is a cross-platform video game. Yeah. Or cross-generation video game, rather. Uh, but Rise of the Ronin, that's a PS5 exclusive. I was expecting a much larger jump, and I just didn't get that. It's not ugly by any means, but it's a game that I feel like I just want Team Ninja to try something else art style-wise, because I think it would really, really benefit them. And I keep on talking about Sifu, and I want them to make, like, their combat is so damn good and so engaging and creative and fun that I want them to just try something else without this, like, they're going for realism and it's just not quite hitting visually. Character creator's fantastic, though. I love their character creator. It's pretty much the same one from Wolong, mm -hmm. but they do a great job with, like, here's a bunch of hairstyles and you can lengthen the hair and you can highlight certain strands of hair and you can curl certain parts of your hair and there's a bunch of different hairstyles on top of that and if you just have a ponytail, well, if you want you know, you can add bangs here or some strands down here. It's just like really, really awesome. In and I depth. think it's worth pointing out if I, my character creator skills are always limited and I always just want to get going. So I pick somebody and I'm like, fine, especially for this one of being like the twin blades designing two characters oh, that are off. So it. fun. It was very much like these presets look good enough. And I changed yeah. the hair. And I did this thing. What I'm finding so much enjoyment on is the depth of the outfits. Yes. Where it's like, sure, you can put a, a click on you're get. I mean, it's raining loot on me and I don't mean loot in like the, necessarily the sense of like oh epics and i guess it does give me a lot of this shit too but i mean looks and styles is what i'm really hung up on right where you going in there and like they have the preset like put on the entire outfit i'm always rocking like these western suits or whatever mm -hmm. on my character uh and then other times it is like we'll go through mix and match pants and tops and hats and this and shoes and it's like there's so much stuff to tool around with and that's another uh, awesome thing about this game is that really quickly they give you the ability to just customize your looks without having to worry about stats, which mm -hmm. was fantastic. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. it early on, you when you finally unlock that ability to not be like, man, this this top looks uh, has like amazing stats and it gives me health back whenever I deflect or whatever, but it looks stupid and I guess I'm going to have to wear it. Really quickly, you kind of get the ability to just customize however you want to look and then just use your whatever thing you're putting on it isn't being shown it's just all for stats transmog, or whatever right yeah yeah, yeah the yeah. transmog is fantastic um but yeah again I, I i know mike needs to talk i'll quit blabbering i think the game <laughs> I like when you blabber i think that I, I think the game does uh everything totally okay in some cases some good but it's just very uh unremarkable in a lot of ways for me Mike. Well said. Yeah, that's where I'm at. This is a fine video game in my book. Like, there's going to be people who love it, who like it. There's going to be people probably like me who just enjoy it and walk away from it, right? For me, it's not doing anything wowing that I need to capture me. That combat, like you said, that coming off of Wolong is fun and engaging, and it's punishing. I'm even playing on easy, and sometimes I'm banging my head against the wall because I just can't get that parry mechanic to go perfectly because there's sometimes where it just feels like I have it, but I don't. And that frustrates me, right? And there's moments where I can stealth the camp and I feel good. And the moment that someone sees me, it's on and popping. And I just 
am not good enough, and I'm feeling like that's a get good situation for me. And unfortunately, it's just not vibing with where I'm at right now. And also the immersion breaking, like you said, there's some writing and dialogue in this game that just a hundred percent takes me out so quick. And we can go from a cutscene that looks like a PS5 exclusive to something that could be easily found on any other console. And there's no reason why I should be praising this, right? It's like, why didn't we take the time to nail this right here? Yeah. And the story is the one thing that was bringing me along. I loved this story about the twin blades. I liked the idea of what we were seeing, but it takes a backseat very quickly early on. And you're kind of, okay, hey, let's learn the world. And there's some very cool characters that get me going and get me excited. But the gameplay, the world, there's nothing fascinating to me right now that says, hey, let's stay in this for 10, 20, 30, 40 hours right now. See, and that's I'm, I'm, not where I'm at. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the, one of the questions we have, I put it up on Twitter if you wanted to write in about this, was Illustrator JoJo says, is this just another Assassin's Creed open world format type of game, or is there enough originality with the action adventure mechanics to make it a first day purchase? And as someone obsessed with Odyssey, right, and then jumping into Assassin's Creed here and there and always chasing that dragon and how much I love an open world like Ghost or how much I love this, you're talking about sinking hours and hours into, like, for me, that flow state of running through the city, grappling up, grappling around the tower, flying off, going, assassinate the, you know what I mean? Like that stuff I am still so high on that I, I fully expect to platinum this game. Like I, this is a game that I'm going to keep. I, I, am, I am going to the GDC awards tonight and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I wish I was going home to play. And I love the awards, but I'm like, I wish I was going home to play more of this because I want to chase that. I want to do that. And I'm enjoying uh, mastering my weapons, right? I'm using a katana. I'm using the two short swords. Uh, you know, there's there's weaponry uh, classes for that. I'm going deep into my skill tree of like, oh man, I really want to invest all the way down here so that I, you know, like once I unlocked grapple assassinations, you know what I mean? Where you're, because it's like literally like it, 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 for my head and enjoying it, it's like, this is so like if, Batman was League of Assassins and never went to be Batman because it is you're like around the neck you bring them up and, like, and then you snap their fucking style. neck I'm like yeah, yeah. holy shit this yeah. is fucking cool and yeah I like when you talk about that Ubisoft checklist open world this has it right that yeah. caught In me spades. right at the beginning there was so much to do and I am a person that will quickly go chase the next shiny thing and go from point A to point B and I think some of the cool stuff on the combat like you said is the wowing uh, animations of just brutal assassinations and combat, right? When you get that full parry and you get the red circle on, it's like, oh, get the deadly animation on. It is cool as can be. I'm ripping people's heads off. It's Lots bloody of all over the it, place. Yeah. There's also some fun moments where it's like you're fighting someone and then maybe they become a friend and the cutscene right afterwards, guy's perfectly fine. And it's like, okay, hold up a second. I ran up like, on it. We just went full gore on each other. <laughs> what? Like, Why is he perfect? Now? There's the little like help the other Ronin or help the person get yeah. in. There was one I ran in. They aren't like side missions. They're like uh, random crimes or whatever. I ran up on one and it was a guy with his practice. His, he's like, oh, this is my uh, student. They had pra they had wooden swords. Like, <laughs> would you like to challenge? I'm like, yeah, sure. Expecting a, me to bring out. No, I had my fucking real blade. <laughs> I was like cutting this dude down and finally it's like, okay, you win. I'm like, all right, but like, the dude was just all on fours ah, at the end, like, oh ah. shit, <laughs> bleeding everywhere. <laughs> and the, the another thing are falling out. I like is the kind of co-op nature, but being able to mm. bring another companion with you, and I love that quick swap. Like you brought up with the weapons, I think it is rad to quick swap to my homie who might have a different weapon set and be able to use that. Or if I go down, now I can go grab the AI, be able to play as him and pick myself up or yeah. vice versa. I think that's fun for someone who loves co-op experiences. Just be able to play with the AI was cool. As I want to get back to the co-op experiences because you can do co-op IRL too and everything else with it, which I don't think any of us did, right? No. The review period or whatever. So it's interesting to point out the AI co-op. But before then, I want to talk about pairing. And before then, I want to talk about the Kind of Funny membership. Of course, if you have the Kind of Funny membership, you can get each and every episode of PS I Love You, XOXO, and all the other Kind of Funny podcasts ad-free. Of course, you could get to watch us record the show live, usually, and all the other shows we do in the afternoon. Uh, and of course, you could get the multimedia experience Greg way each and every day. But you're not using your Kind of Funny membership right now. So here's a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Shady Rays, an independent sunglasses brand that has over 300,000 five-star reviews. They're on a mission to match affordability with durability, making top quality shades accessible to everyone. They have tons of styles and colors to pick from, so finding the best polarized shades is a breeze. Get ready for a whole new level of clarity with Shady Rays Pro Polarized Lenses. 
This lens tech is all about tough durability and vibrant colors that pop. Here at Kinda Funny, we all love wearing our Shady Rays. Whether it's Tim looking dope during his Pokemon Go walk, Snowbike Mike rocking the snow goggles, or Joey just looking fantastic in her tangle-free shades. If your shades go MIA or take a hit, don't sweat it. They've got lost and broken protection, so you're covered from day one. And if you don't love your shades, exchange or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Exclusively for y'all, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Head to ShadyRays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 300,000 people. Again, that is ShadyRays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. This episode is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Okay, Andy, one of the questions I, that got written in, and Mike was talking about not being able to nail the Perry mechanic. I want you, Perry Poppy, mm -hmm. to explain the Perry mechanic, but then also you go off of Clute's question of how tight is the Perry mechanic compared to Wolong Final uh, yeah, Fallen Dynasty? So, uh, Wolong, I believe I was able to remap a lot of my controls mm -hmm. to Soul Style Combat, where light attack is on R1, yep. uh, heavy attack is on R2, and then parry is on L1. I'm pretty sure that's how I was able to do it, which is how most Souls games work. It's how Sekiro works as well. And um, Lies of P was a recent example of trying to time your parries right so that you kind of get that stagger meter up, bam, you break them, they're, stagger, they're completely staggered going for the, for the aggressive kill or whatever. And um, I'm... It didn't really work with me being able to switch to those. You can remap your buttons, but I think this game has a lot more mechanics that didn't fully allow me to do that easily, okay. where um, they have there's a bit more going on uh, button-wise mechanically, so I couldn't just easily... It would require that I would have to, like, hold down weird buttons at the same time to do certain things, so that wasn't really going to work out for this, me. You know, I, 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 I've talked shit before about the Xbox Elite controller, the PlayStation... Elite, whatever. Dual mm, Sense. Dual, dual. It will dual Sense Elite, whatever. I forget what they call their fancy version of the back pedals. Edge. That, thank you. That I gave to Janet because I was like, I'm never going to use this. And there was a few times in this game, I'm like, oh, fuck, that would help. Because <laughs> I'm like doing the old Monster Hunter claw finger to oh, hit the D pad yeah, while yeah. I'm like fighting other people because I need to heal and I'm backing away. <laughs> um, so it did take a, a little bit longer to get used to. And uh, I guess the frustrating thing with that is, you know, I I'm used to attacking with my. Index finger and my middle finger on the attack buttons and then using my right thumb for the right stick, but now having to take my thumb off the camera to then like parry if I need to um, on the triangle button, triangle. which I think is yeah, it, what it is by default. So it made things a little bit difficult and I don't feel like I've gotten quite the level of Sekiro or Liza P where if an enemy comes at you and they go slash slash hesitation slash slash slash, I haven't been able to like thin thing. Thing, 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 and kind of rhythmically find that yeah, um, yeah, yeah. super satisfying, but it still works. It's not the best, but it, it like I think it's one of the better implementations of See, a parry. Mechanic. As somebody who's usually terrible at parry, like just not good. I'm, I'm usually I'll roll, dodge roll the side on these yeah. kind of things. Get out of it and just get you that That's way. That's a or smarter whatever. call. I'm fine. Well, I'm finding it. I, this one's clicked with me, mm, and it took nice. a while where I was a little bit more of Mike, like shit, fuck, I'm I'm getting attacked, I'm getting attacked. Whereas this one is, you know, wait for the red dot and then go for it. And then it is a lot of defense, right? Where it is, all right, you come at me, make your mistakes. I'm gonna either block or dodge, and then get in, and get a couple quick slashes. I fall back, and then I wait yeah. for that big red moment to get in there and do it. 
Yeah, of you, course, I mean, it's all about breaking down their stance yeah. as well. Very similar of like you're parrying to fill up the bar, then that yeah. breaks them. You do the kind of stronger attack. From what I'm feeling on the parrying, it just feels a little bit looser than Wolong, right? Wolong was very much like, we're going to make a Dark Souls and you're going to learn this and do this. This one, I think it's the hesitation. If you see it coming at you, you feel like that's the instinct to hit it. Yeah. And it's like half a second yeah. or like just a moment later than what I'm accustomed to. So I'll hit it. I'll miss it by a second, and then he'll hit me, right? And now you get in this weird moment of the parry is also a weird, like, upward slash. So you're in the mechanic of slashing. You can't re-parry. He hits you, and you're panicking already to hit another parry or try to attack, and you just, just cycles off right away. Yeah, on the yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. your stamina may be low or whatever in that moment. Your key. Huh? Key. Chi? Key? I thought KI was chi. I don't know. Probably but maybe is. you're right. I don't know. Um... <laughs> But yeah, so I, I do find pairing a lot easier when it's on like a left bumper type sure, thing, which sure, sure, again, sure. I tried to do that uh, initially and then saw what it would do to the rest of my control scheme. Oh. I was like, ooh, oh, that's 30 minutes of that, troubleshooting this. That seems kind of like a nightmare. controls going on. Yeah. You're going to be l one in and left D-pad and switching to different things. It's got a lot of controls on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it definitely could be a bit easier and more, I guess, more approachable in that sense. But that's the solution that they probably had because they... We're like, shit, well, we have a lot of things they still need to be able to do, right? And this is the best of all the bad solutions, I guess. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And that's the thing where they're not afraid to throw stuff at you and keep throwing stuff at you, which I found interesting, right? Where it is like, okay, cool, there's the combat styles for all these weapons, right? And yeah, there's nine different weapons or whatever out there to do. Let alone, you know, Then you have mastery of each one of those. There's a tr oh. There is a question here from Oliver Martin, how are the trophies? From my perusal, I haven't. I, I looked at one and immediately had a story thing spoiled. I was like, Fuck. so I like looked farther ahead. So I'm not like that deep into it or whatever. It seems like not insane. There's one in here of like the you know do one on the midnight difficulty, which would be hard, but it's just a mission, so it should be whatever. Uh, but yeah, there are like I think it is max out or maybe hit one of the levels on all the weapons, which could be time consuming to go through that and seems do or pretty whatever. Nice. Especially because like I'm I love my builds, right? Like I like what I'm doing, you know. And again, back to my odyssey comparison like i'm using on my d-pad on you know my loadout number one uh the poison whetstone right so when i get a big enemy in there it's like all right poison the swords let's go at it and get in there and have some fun big ability tree as well i was very Lots of stuff i was impressed on. but also like decision paralysis stepped in right away of like man this is massive you got to really choose where you want to go but i think that's the fun part of it is like there's so much choice in this game like you bring up with the weapons yeah. to this ability tree like there's a lot going on that you can get lost in and really make your own or just kind of find what you like which is what i did. i feel that's the way it's going to be that you find what you want right yeah stats are spread out and these are the, then each have their own individual trees of strength dexterity charm intellect uh, and then, you, of course, you're earning XP as you go, but you can also get books. You can also hit up shrines. You're getting skill points all over the place and doing these things. And, like, that's where, yeah, the grapple assassination for me came from. That was huge. Uh, it, under intellect, I got the persuade thing unlocked so I could start persuading people in conversations and things to that effect, too. Yeah, which uh, all the persuasion stuff feels very shoehorned in. It, it doesn't feel like it matters. Somebody wrote in as well. Hey, uh, gray-haired gamer, do decisions make a huge difference on how the story plays out? We haven't rolled credits, and nor have I looked at Andy's thing. From my experience, it doesn't look like they do. A whole bunch of different... Your character is voiceless. You have a whole bunch of different options to pick what to say, though. And some of them are super rude, and some of them aren't. And I accidentally picked a rude one once, and it led to the end of the conversation to me getting the thing I needed to get. Yeah, I selected it, a rude one. Nothing happened. Yeah, yeah well, I, I think it, it does work. Um, I think some of the, the dialogue choices do affect how your potential allies your will work with you and, and help that bond. It reminds, me a, a of, bond. Yeah, reminds yeah. me a lot of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, where if you are constantly you know, responding positively or negatively, then if it's negatively a bunch, you probably don't want to take that ally in because they're going to be less powerful uh, to you know, be your little squad mate or whatever. But um, one thing that is kind of interesting, and I'm not completely sure what like how in-depth it goes, is the pro shogunate or anti shogunate sort of um wherever you're leaning yeah, yeah, yeah uh because you essentially do run into both different factions and they are color coded purple or green and you can start leaning towards anti shogunate and you meet some characters from people that are against kind of like the government and everything and they don't want um western influence to be happening with their current local government or whatever and it's interesting to meet those characters and then do anti-shogunate stuff, but then you still have the ability to do 
pro-government type things and i don't no matter who wins i'm winning i don't and, and i don't and or and you also have the option to be like actually i'm just gonna go look for my tw- my twin blade or whatever yeah, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. there's that option in some moments as well um i i would love to see i don't think i'm gonna beat this game i think i was es- wondering about that yeah. i think especially now that dragon's dogma uh is you know out now that's a game that i've been wanting to play but i i did want to kind of try to find a silver lining here and, and again this is not a bad game it's just like I, I 20 hours in for me to finally have something that felt substantive uh story-wise is is kind of a bummer that it took that long for me to get there yeah. but uh like there's there's a couple side qu- side quests that i've had that made me feel like i was going to get one of those emotional beautiful spider-man 2 sort of cutscenes. yeah um, where there's a random little side character that you know, oh my gosh, what a, what a beautiful little uh, wrap up to this little side quest, and then they just kind of thudded the landing. I was like, oh man, like this was something that you could have made me feel right here. Yeah. Uh, so that kind of let me down, but I don't fully see myself beating this game. I I am interested in learning from people who do beat the game to find out exactly how all the you know what side do you lean because. Um, it doesn't really. It, it's very, very gray area still. It doesn't like there's very good people and some shady people on both sides. Uh, that you know, on the pro shogunate side, uh, there's like some people that just want to learn from Western civilizations that are like well-meaning, and then from the anti shogunate side, there's some people that are like a little too too rebellious, and you're like, oh man, that guy seemed kind of chill. Why did you just kill him? Like that? You know what I mean? So uh, it, it's fascinating. I just don't know if it's going to really really satisfy in a lot of ways it's interesting i think when people think of team ninja for the most part and this is me is pretty much an outsider with the exception of marvel ultimate alliance i think they think of gameplay yeah so i do think story matters that much or is it just because i think because i one of the things i've heard you talk about uh it comes from aaron will it satiate my current shogun hunger of course you're watching that show right now is that do you think the story is, is the story a standout as a miss for you because you want that from this kind of material, this kind of world, this kind of setting? Whereas with Ninja Gaiden, did the story matter? No, everybody just wanted to kill everything. Huh? Yeah, I, I think when you are presenting yourself as an open world game with a lot of choices, mm-hmm. uh, there are expectations come with that. And sure. if, if they were to have, hey, the new game by Teen Ninja is a, is a roguelite game. You create a dude, you just go through, it, it's Sifu. S- the story can be secondary, but it's so artful in a lot of ways. It, it's just not either of those. So when you're building a big open world game, I know that Team Ninja cares about gameplay first and foremost. Yeah. And I just don't know if you should attempt <laughs> a game in this totally, genre totally. if you're not really, I, if you don't got the goods to quite back it it's up. It's another one for me of like when the first trailer dropped during whatever it was, if it was SGF or if it was a PlayStation, whatever it yeah. was, when we, we live reacted to it in here talking about it. Uh, and looking at it and loving it, and I was like, oh, man, it looks great. You know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. And then the build-up to it has been quiet, and I hadn't played it again until review. I went in not remembering the decision stuff, so I've just had it as... Uh, that's what I, Back to it being a game, right? Like, it is just a playground of things to run off and landmarks to find and photos to take, and, like, yeah, the story... I don't like. I was one of those like I know that I you know yeah the twin blade thing starts and then I get over here and now I'm just running through being I'm just being a, a warrior right and it's like the one of the guys I helped today uh, he had lost all his clothes and at the end he when he offered his reward he's like oh man I don't have the coin on me and I'm and I'm like I know you know there was a jerk choice this choice there I was just like I would help you no matter what and he's like why and I'm like it's just and not my character's like it's the thing to do I'm you know I'm a samurai that's what I'm like I was like what else I'm, I'm like I don't know I'm running around stabbing people <laughs> you, you needed help I went down and stabbed a bunch today. of guys for you it's great I would say like if you are in the show the shogun uh, mood right now and you haven't played Ghost of Tsushima play that of course right that um, that has the narrative punch behind the gameplay yeah and and I think that's like it's so much so that I I redownloaded Ghost of Tsushima just to be like. Ghost of Tsushima looks like a lot better than this. And I know that Ghost of Tsushima was in development for a lot longer. And I've, I've already had people be like, yeah, but, you know, Team Ninja's putting out games quicker. And, like, yeah. it took, you know, Sucker Punch five years to put that out. And, you know, we love the quicker releases. It's like, but is that to the benefit? Like, is that to our benefit that they are putting out these releases a lot quicker? Are they... the? Could this have used an extra year in the oven? You know, sure. and and... I think it could have, but I do think Team Ninja is also just trying to, I think they're at a place where 
they feel they can put out stuff that's good enough and they could put it out at a faster pace. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be a five, four year development process where I'm sure some people were working on this because Wolong came out two years ago. So there had to have been a team that was still doing Rise of the Ronin stuff. They didn't, I don't think they made this game in two years. That sounds kind of insane. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, it's one of those, does that, does that help or hurt this? I think what's interesting is to the way us and the people I was talking to at GDC about this game, right, are coming at it with different expectations based on the world is understandably entering into, which is a post Ghost of Tsushima world, a pre Assassin's Creed Red, right, that's supposed to drop this year that you imagine is going to be beautiful and gorgeous and story driven and huge and blah, blah. And I think there, it's back to that thing of, of at least for me and my narrative with this of the game part of it, right? Where it's like, yeah, we could have done all that, but we didn't. What a year helped. Well, we think the gameplay is great. When does anybody care about stories and yada yada yada? And I'm I'm the story guy, so I do. But it's also the fact that like the game has so many interesting time saves in it, right? Where it's like with once you get the horse, you can have the horse auto run to the objective. You yeah. drop them tag anywhere on the map, and then you can have the horse auto run. So you could eat your drumstick or check your phone or <laughs> just do whatever you need to do. You can go into the settings and then say. Uh, auto sell or auto dismantle uh, things in your inventory when you check in at the flags, which is where you mm -hmm. you know restock and do all your things. So it's like you can collect everything and say, well, if it's not you know whatever epic tier, then just automatically sell it, automatically dismantle. It's great. We you know talk with Final Fantasy 16 so much about active time lore. The fact that they have the timeline here, where it's like if you are picking it back up and you sit at the fire, you can go to the timeline and see what was the thing I did and who was this guy and like connect it, even though it's not like nearly as intense a story i do appreciate that of like yo we know you just want to go stab people because that's what i want to go do and how i want to go fly off and, and to go it. off of the active time lore thing another awesome piece of like accessibility but also just i feel like every game should have this not only can you pause the cutscenes, but you can look at the conversation history in the cutscene. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so you can't mm -hmm. like rewind the cutscene, but when you pause it you could see what did the last four lines of dialogue say? Like, oh, that person said this, then this person said that. I think that stuff is fantastic because that it, there's times where I want to like write a note down and then yeah, I look at yeah, yeah. like, oh shit, I'm missing the cutscene, you know. So I yeah, think yeah. all that stuff is really, really cool and helpful for the for the end user, you know. Mikey, I want to get back to it because you had brought up the switching control again. Yeah. You can co-op in this game. Basically, it's like before you go off on a major mission, you can have people join Pull you or whatever, someone, right? Yeah. You can also bring in your AI companions that you have or met through your story. And again, we talked about bonds. They're nowhere near as in-depth as a persona social link or something to that effect. But they are the people you meet in the story. You have a bond with them. And then if you choose to help them out and do their side stuff, the bond gets better. There's an inventor, right? Give so him a little gift. You go over, you give him a gift. Yeah, you go over, yeah. you give him the thing he wants. His level goes up and he can do different inventions for you that are up on a tree or whatever. Uh, uh, Lurarian wrote in and said, how often are you switching into controlling the allies you meet throughout the game? This feature is only speaking of, spoken of in some previews and I'm wondering if reviewers are actually making use of this mechanic. I don't think I switch as often as you would think because I like my character and my build. I think it's the catch that people will find. It's like, I'm not switching because I enjoy my guy, right? Like, I have my weapons toned to me. I have the ability set. That's why I want to be him. But I do like the ability to quick swap, which is very fast. It's a quick button switch. You jump over and you can be that. But like I said, what I really found that was useful was when I did go down, I would immediately switch them. The fight wasn't over. We didn't have to restart. I could run over, pick myself up. I could continue to fight as my companion, which is always fun. It's a nice little change up. Sometimes of like, oh, I forgot this guy's using this weapon or I rarely ever use this. This is a nice touch, right? To then immediately switch back. I always found myself coming back to me though, but it was a fun balance of like, he's that enemy. Once you really start attacking is going to chase you. Your ally kind of like, takes a little bit of priority but like it's not focusing them they're coming after you no matter what so like when i ran down the stairs it was following me and i would switch to the ally hit a couple of times and it would turn back to him when i was in right. control but he's not taking the uh what do they call that like the aggro? aggro yeah he's not taking aggro from me which you know i think would be a better juggle if i needed that but it, it's not like that when it's an npc yeah i'm in the same boat where uh I've used it in the tutorial in the very opening. It's a big part of it, right? And then from there on out, yeah, it was only if I went down, then I would hop over to that person and use them. Otherwise, I know who I am. I know who my character is. I know what she's going to do with her poison sword. So it's like I'm sticking that way and sticking it out. Same. Yeah, I would 
Only I only switched a couple times where I knew a certain enemy I was having trouble with was weak to one of the weapons that one of my allies had. Yeah. But for the most part, I would try to just res myself whenever because I I know my special moves, I know my special abilities, and I like the way they look and I like what they do. And you have that one spin attack, or I have that one sort of thrust up in the air and come back down. So it 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 was mainly because of familiarity that I stuck with my character. Um, instead of swapping over to the other people. But there was, I mean, there's a couple of NPC moments that you look at the end, the ally and you're like, what are you, what are you here for? Like, uh, you have done well, nothing. Well, that was my thing. There was a few times where I was like, do I even want to, like, there's some times when you're infiltrating the camps of, like, saving hostages. And I was like, I don't even know if I want to save you because I don't want you to fuck up what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm moving very stealthily and I uh, want everybody dead immediately yeah, yeah. the way I want them dead. I, I liked that backup. I did find that interesting of like when we talk about saving hostages of like, that's not my just true companion, right? That's yeah. someone yeah, yeah, down yeah, yeah, in yeah, the yeah, camp yeah. and you can free them, help them, and then they can stand up and help you fight. I thought that was really cool of like... And it is. You know, and they also will just stealth it if you're stealthing. Oh, they will yeah. get in the Sometimes way. I just need a little help, so I like, I always appreciated that, but I do agree with There's moments where I'm like, I got this, dude. You just stay over there. I'll come back and get <laughs> yeah. you. I'm ready. Yeah, I'll be interested at launch to try out the actual co-op when there's more of a pool of players, because again, I joined so late and we were all fractured. We didn't get a chance to do that see what that's like. I'm also fascinated to see exactly how the system works, and it's something I'm sure they've maybe posted about on a blog or it's on their website, but there are certain enemy camps that you can go take down and then it does the you know little time lapse and yeah people move in and there's barter there's people that are sell that, that that feels like the most like we asked an ai to make an open world game like <laughs> that stuff is like holy shit it's so it's so it feels like so placeholder like they're like just put the time lapse animation and we'll get to it later and it just never ever got improved or anything uh, not like the animation looks bad it just the concept of it feels very very rushed but um Every once in a while, there's an NPC that you can go free who's, like, captured, right? Yeah. And they'll be like, help, help me or whatever. And they're always named, like, they're not an in-game character. Mm. They're always named, like, either they're meant to look as another player NPC, like, as if maybe I'm, like, a Drivatar. Like, yeah. maybe I'm, I'm saving Greg's we'll character in my world. I was wondering about yeah. this. One I, yeah, I didn't look into it either. The one I popped up had a name that wasn't one I'm... Like oh, it was like, like Spicy Bob Twenty Five. Dragon's Dogma Two, you know, Beans Got Games. His his uh, uh, assistant he made yeah, came help me. Yeah, yeah, Pawn. Thank you so much. And I was so I was looking for is that what this is? But I couldn't tell you. That's that's what I think it is. I do think that that's just kind of a way to include and see your friends' characters. Nice. Maybe go free them, which yeah, yeah, yeah. I think is kind of. Yeah, I didn't see anybody that I knew, and it's I got to assume mainly because we're all privated on our profiles yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, but yeah. Um, that concept does seem pretty neat. I would love to suddenly see a friend's character like trapped like holy shit i just rescued you how how funny or whatever and then oh, they assist you, you in that fight you wouldn't help me i want to need your help I said. oh you? shit okay i have a question <laughs> about get like, out myself. the cities and towns right you talk about like the villages kind of snapping to and having people there but the town i found empty i didn't find it to be lively you're talking about like the major of, downtown the, yeah oh like coming off of assassin's creed right where sure. like you're bumping shoulder to shoulder. Yep. I felt like I was walking around a ghost town in there. It'd be almost the same model twice walking by me. They'd be spread out. There might be only three in front of me. And I always thought, man, it just feels like it's lifeless in here for a PS5 exclusive. And I know a lot of people are going to start talking about that, right? It's like, I just thought a little bit more here on the density factor. You're not wrong. I think, you know, it speaks back to what we're talking about of like, I think there are choices here in the game they're trying to make. You know what I mean? For better or worse, whatever you and however you want to interpret or critique from it, right? Because that was my thing too. When I ran into town that first time, I was like, oh, all right, this is not an Assassin's Creed town where it is the half brick wall and I go over and there's all these other people. Oh, and they freak out when I, you know, I, you weren't getting that. But then very quickly I unlocked the glider suit and it was like, oh, I'm not even supposed to be on the ground. Like whoosh, just up in yeah. the, you know what I mean? Just all over the place and doing it. And I think it goes back to what, Andy was talking about, right, and obviously what's been uh, shared a million times on social media, right, the, um, I want shorter games with worse graphics made by people who get paid more to work less, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, it's like, and I, obviously this is still a humongous game, don't get me wrong, but it's like, this is a game. This is a game we're making. If you are like me and want to go fucking stabby stab and fly through the air and do the thing, I think they're like, this is what we're making for you, rather than trying to be a ghost that is a you know a well-rounded experience like we're trying to get it you know down to a t across all things because again like i think when you, I, you know, I wrote down all the open world stuff like that you know it's it's 
Reads like every other open world. There's fugitives to find, cats to pet, landmarks to visit, photos to take, banners to raise, random crimes. It's like, you know, back to the question early on, is this just an Assassin's Creed open world? Yes, I think it is. It is just that. But I think their twist on traversal is fun. I think, you know, calling the horse and having it immediately pick you up and run with you and then auto run if you want to. Great. Like they've they've done a bunch of stuff here where it's like, yeah, we are taking from other games, but we're trying to make it frictionless or as frictionless as possible. And I think that speaks to it to get back into it to then I'm always excited to go in stealth kill everybody and when it pops off and I fuck it up I'm like this is fun too like there's that moment of like let's fucking go and I need to figure out your cadence so I stop getting stabbed and then when I I like I feel like those first few hours of really getting my shit kicked in and then now being like okay I got this like you went back to the Americans we meet early on in the game at some point like uh today i was moving and it was like oh there's one of the red things to take down with i'm like all right let's go and i got there i was like oh it's the american consulate that's dope as shit and i I started killing all those guys and then from around this corner came like this basically uh, he looked like abraham lincoln if he got hit with gamma radiation like he was up and he had two axes in the open shirt and the i was like this is fucking cool let's go (laughs) it's fucking hilarious that is that's got to be one of the worst 3d models i've ever seen (laughs) because like i I guess the the funny thing about that is that whenever you've played if if, you know i i never played neo but i know neo is you're fighting massive demons or like just cool looking like characters that are maybe your size one of these one-on-one sparring sessions Wolong, very similar, um, and sometimes that takes up a lot of the wow factor. But whenever you enter a room and a cutscene starts, you're like, "Oh shit!" And this big, gigantic thing falls from the ceiling. And it's uh, mon- the hulking yeah, monster, yeah, yeah. right? You're like, "Holy shit!" This is like, not only am I excited for this fight, but I'm excited for this presentation of what this boss like looks like. And in you, you know, in, in Wolong and in this, whenever you want to fight. If you're going to fight a larger-than-life brooding character, what does that brute character, that tank-like dude, look like? And um, here they are uh, represented by, like, larger sumo-style dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're tall as shit. They're maybe twice as tall as you. Got some giant Super heavy set. Oh, they're massive. Fucking rock at me. They're, it, they have, yeah, the big-ass, like, <laughs> it, like, a baseball bat with spikes on it. These dudes are, are hulking monsters, right? And it's <laughs> they're the um, they were basically like, well, what's our version of the hulking American? And it straight up looks like Wreck It Ralph with a beard. Like <laughs> this dude is almost twice as tall as you. His head is about the size of your so torso. Big. This dude looks so out of place. I loved it. I was like, this is so <laughs> stupid. Let's fuck up Abe Lincoln. I took so many screenshots of it of it last night because the first time I encountered, it, I was like, what is this? Because I saw it from a distance. I was like. This dude's, like, this monster's um, silhouette doesn't look like anybody else I'm about to face. But it's still a human, I'm pretty sure. And it's just, like, it's so funny that that was, like, here's the American brute version of it. Yeah. I I loved it. I also hated it. <laughs> it was one of those, like, what is this? Could we have not done something else? I think it's one else, of those that's great that sets, again, what this game is yeah. in the same way... Uh, uh, Paratuni wrote in and said, are there any non-human enemies? Yeah, there's dogs and wolves. Yeah. And my favorite today when I was fighting a Rottweiler and I did a backflip cartwheel. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm oh, fucking... Fuck oh, yeah. Those goddamn wolves always just one step away from me. I'm like, get yeah. closer to me. Gotta I fight these boars, right these fucking backflipping <laughs> dogs. I'm like, this game's awesome. The dogs are so Love good at backflipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so again, this is a review in progress, even though Mike, your progress is stopping it. I'm done. Like, yeah, yeah. What? So I want to know then. It, no one's holding you to. You didn't roll yeah, credits yeah. yeah, But what would you, with your experience, what would you rate it? It's a three out of five. Yeah. Um, like I said, I think there's going to be people who are going to find a lot of joy in this. They're going to have a good time with this. I think there's going to be people who say, "Man, this is a PS5 exclusive. I was expecting so much more." Sure. And I think if you're not in the mood for an open world game right now, this probably isn't it because there are so many other games to play. And for me, it's just not what I'm in the mood for right now. I played it. I found some difficulty spikes that I just couldn't battle through. I didn't find the world to be engaging and like, oh, this is where you need to be right now, Mike. And uh, it's not where I'll spend the rest of my time. But it's a three out of five good to find video game. Okay. Andy? I'm right about there, yeah. Because this is very similar to my Wolong experience where me and Blessing played Wolong. We beat it and we were like, combat's great. A whole lot else isn't super great. And uh, it's very serviceable. Totally fine. Again, it does nothing bad. It just doesn't do anything fantastic that I would say, you got to go out and get this shit right now. 
uh, for me. So yeah, I'd, I'd give it like a three out of five and say like it could hit you at the right time and be a five out of five for you right now. If you're yeah. like Dragon's Dogma doesn't interest me, but holy shit, I can put on a podcast and go clear out some enemy camps. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, neither you are wrong, I don't think, on it. I think I would say right now, again, I will eventually roll credits on this and do the whole thing. I, right now, I would think I'm having a four out of five great time with it. But again, it's that game, all capitals I'm talking about, oh, yeah. right? Where it's like, I don't. I think so. The survey, sur- <laughs> the story is serviceable, and this is serviceable. But it's the moment-to-moment moment mechanics. This is what I hinted at in the Dragon's Dogma review, right? Of just for me, just going from point A to point B is so fast and fluid and fun in this game. Let alone when I get there and it's okay. I gotta raise the banner up there, or I've cleared the camp, but there's one guy up high and I don't have a bone arrow. What was my move? And it's that I nerd out about okay. I'm going to run around the block or run around this mountain. There's always a oh, back there's engine. The, there's the thing to hook to and go. <laughs> and like, there was one point when I was swimming and I went underwater to get to something. And it was like, oh, you need the hook to pull your. I was like, oh my God, I, there's a new thing. I went and unlocked that and came back. And I'm like, I love not the puzzles. That's not it. But the puzzly nature of like doing stuff and find the treasure chest, find the cat, do that kind of thing. Like get those little cat. moments. <laughs> but it's an interesting one of, I do wonder, especially for me, of. I'm having such a great time with it, but what happens when I do become stronger than God? You know what I mean? And what about and if I haven't rolled credits on that? Do I? And I'm not being driven by story. Is it that it is going to be a man? I put 25 hours in, and I, I I'm what I'm max level or whatever, and it's great. But I don't need to see the end of this. I'll move on or whatever. Right now, like I said, I'm super motivated to go through and try to platinum it. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, I like the beginning of the story. I like. I'm looking forward to go. Will it pay off in the end? Like yeah. I, I can't wait to read others' reviews and see all like the spoiler cast because like I think you know what's gonna happen. And so it's like, okay, is this just gonna be a paint by numbers situation where I go, Oh, yeah, I, that was it. I talked to another reviewer yesterday at at an event and name names. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> and they uh, and they had given it was who gives fuck. They're <laughs> like, Yeah, that's 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 about how most of us felt. And then they were like, Did you get to this part? And yeah. I was like, No. And they're like, okay, once you get to the that part, that's when it it gets better. And I again, it took me twenty hours to get to that spot. Yeah, yeah and yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. it's like, oof, that's a lot of time. Like, totally, especially totally. if you are not a game reviewer and you have two hours a night to play, maybe three times a and week. And that's the you big know? thing about it too, of like, you know, hitting at the right time, which it is for me. You know, I, I love a good open world, but it's also like I'm not like I'm not a. a ignorant to the fact that I like of what I'm talking about here is like in a lot of ways slop right it is just putting all this shit to do in a trough and it's like that sounds great for me to come <laughs> sometimes mind, I want to eat that come up. mindlessly sometimes. down have some comfort slop yeah. and go get these grab two, your jump you know, <laughs> as soon as I go there uh, zoom out and go what did you say grab your jump drumstick okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I w- you want to know how defensive I am about Ghostbusters I thought he said grab your jumpsuit and I was like oh. don't listen to that 4 out of 10 <laughs> review it's not that it's not that Andy <laughs> But you know, get there, zoom out the map, and What'd be. You say? <laughs> the look he made. He beat your fucking. <laughs> took it real to heart right there. All right, I'm very sensitive today. All right, <laughs> zoom all the way out and be like, okay, I'm gonna go get this top. I'm gonna go fight that camp. I'm gonna. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna do. Like again, for a game where I'm not like, what did happen to the fucking inventor? I don't give a yeah. shit. I don't know. I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I hope it lasts. We'll Good. I, I hope it does last for you. I like those moments when we all have those one games where we go. It starts giving you the look like I'm going to go crazy on this game. Yep. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, this is PS I Love You XOXO, your PlayStation podcast. Each and every week we get together for a PlayStation conversation and enjoy, uh, damn it, invite you to join us is what I said. I was like, maybe I can pivot. I'm like, ah, that's not even yeah. a word. Enjoy. Already, <laughs> you're already There's no way out of that. <laughs> it's a good movie. Andy. All right. Don't listen to him. I'm sure Paul Rudd's great. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, of course, we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, get that Kind of Funny membership. With Kind of Funny membership, you, of course, can usually watch us record this show ad-free. You can always get it ad-free. You can watch all the other podcasts recorded ad-free. You can get all of them ad-free. You can get all the things with none of the ads, and it's great. Plus, of course, you get the multimedia experience Greg Way each and every day. No bucks tossed away, no big deal. YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Podcast services around the globe. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.